combine a little bit of supposed biblical truth with a whole bunch of lies and leaven and expect to have a good result. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Aside from the fact that when presented as a myth, the truth may be, may be mistaken as a myth as well. Think about that. No clear understanding can be forthcoming without prior knowledge of the truth. In which case, the allegory or the analogy is useless. In any case, it is dangerous to present evil as good. Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 17, verse 13, um, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Actually, no, that's Isaiah. Uh, Proverbs 17.13 says, Woe unto them that reward evil for good and good for evil. For evil shall not depart from their house. Now, that's kind of what C.S. Lewis was doing. He was rewarding you evil for good. I mean, <laughs> you pay your hard money to get his book and here, here he rewards you evil. That's true. He did, if you think about it. In any case, it is dangerous to present evil as good and magic as synonymous with the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. Many of Lewis's characters in his fantasies depicted as good are in reality associated with witchcraft, pagan mythology, and North, Norse mysteries. They are, in fact, gods of, the gods of nature. And magic in these stories is either used for good or evil purposes, depending upon the source of that magic. One of the more pronounced confusions of good and evil is the quote, till we have faces, work by Lewis, retelling of the Greek myth of Cupid and Psyche, oh, one of my favorite. Written just a few years before his death, in this work, several ungodly concepts are espoused as valid truths. One such is a strong hint at the universalist doctrine. This is from the book uh, that we just mentioned, Till We Have Faces, page 300 through 1. It says, quote, we're all Tims, whatever that means, and parts of one whole. Hence, of each other, men and gods flow in and out until we mingle. Oh, okay. That sounds about as pantheistic as you could possibly be. God and everything, you know? So, too, one might also think Lewis, Lewis looked upon suicide as an acceptable act also. On page 17 of the same book we just read, he says, Have I not told you often that to depart from life of a man's own will, when there is good reason, is one of the things that is accorded to nature? So if you want to kill yourself as long as there's a good reason, hey, do it. It's accorded to you by nature. Of course, none of this, again, can he back up in the scripture, but, you know, hey. Lewis was necessarily, was Lewis necessarily aware of his error? He apparently saw no incompatibility between his professed faith and his occult fantasy. I guarantee you why is because he was not a Bible believer. He was not a Bible follower. He was a Bible questioner. He didn't read the Bible. He wasn't born again. If he was, he couldn't have done this. He apparently saw no incompatibility between his professed faith and occult fantasy. His imagination welded upon fantasy in preference to what he considered a faulty reality, set the theme for his writings, and became the basis for confusion by readers who perceived them as a Christian allegory. While millions accept Lewis's apologetics as evidence of a genuine faith, they forget that he was a fallible man whose writings in total in total must be subjected to by testing of God's word. See, that's what we're doing here today. We're testing Lewis's own writings, own speech, by, his, by the word of God. And it doesn't hold up, as you see. We see in Christian bookstores, Lewis's treatise on Christian thought alongside his occult fantasies. It has apparently escaped notice that Lewis is highly respected among those in occultism. In fact, there has developed a cult of sorts which venerates the fantasies of Lewis along with those of other writers who do not claim to be Christians. Evidence of this is the fact that Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia is listed among other occult writings as recommended inspirational reading by the makers of the demonically inspired oriented game Dungeons and Dragons. They recommend you read Chronicles of Narnia before you become a dungeon master on Dungeons and Dragons. That's just one of the many occult groups. Oh, but I'm the bad guy for, for talking about C.S. Lewis. I'm causing division among the brethren. Oh, I'm sure I'll hear that on that. You know? 
I already quoted the verses to refute that. We're supposed to mark these people. This man was a heretic. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's all he was. Plain and simple. A prime example of how a fantasy novelist is able to weave truth and untruth and fact and fable, thus distorting the word of God, is found in C.S. Lewis's book, The Last Battle of the Chronicles of Narnia. Series. Young people who read this book are falsely led to believe that all sin and evil that a person has committed in serving Satan can in the end be counted as service rendered to God. Well, where does it say that? Well, we're going to look at that in a second. Let's look at it right now. This is from that book, The Last Battle of the Chronicles of Narnia series. Here's a quote from it. He says, Then I fell at his feet and thought, Surely this is the hour of death. For the lion... This is the, the Christ figure, who is worthy of all honor, again, the Christ figure, <clears throat> will know that I have served Tosh. Okay, so let me just read this again. Then I fell at his feet and thought, he felt the lion's feet and thought, surely this is the hour of my death, for the lion who is worthy of all honor will know that I have served Tosh, who is supposedly the Narnian representation of Satan. Then he says, all my days... I have served Tash, and not him, the lion, who is the Christ. But the glorious one bent down his golden head, the lion, and said, Son, thou art welcome. But I said, Alas, Lord, I am no son of thine, but I serve Tash, or Satan. And then he, the lion, answered and said, Child, all the service thou hast done unto Tash, I account as service done unto me. End of quote. Is that a lie from the pit of hell? I would say affirmative on that one 100%. All the service that is done to the devil is accounted service done unto Christ? Where's that in the Bible? Never, anywhere in the Bible is that said. But that's what the Chronicles of Narnia are teaching. Lewis is teaching a damnable false doctrine here and is even... And it is even more wicked in that it is intended for the indoctrination of children. First, according to Lewis, those who sincerely serve the devil, Tash, are actually serving God, or Ajlon, and will eventually be accepted by God. That is, heresy of, that is the heresy of universalism, believing that God will somehow receive unbelievers and followers of false religions into heaven, even though they do not know Jesus Christ in this life. Furthermore, Lewis is teaching that salvation can be achieved by works and religious seeking, and that and that is another false gospel that is cursed of cursed by God in the book of Galatians. Here's another article uh, entitled C.S. Lewis Exposed. J.K. Rowling, author of the demonic Harry Potter series, has said that C.S. Lewis is one of her favorite two authors. J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter's. That's how much it influenced her. So see, now you have this corrupt seed that Lewis has planted with all of his demonic writings. And look at the seed. When a seed germinates and comes and grows and grows into a great tree, if that tree is an evil tree, it will bear evil fruit. Well, this is one of his followers, J.K. Rowling. He's one of her favorite two authors. So what a legacy he has left. Good old C.S. Lewis. Look, who's he, look who he has inspired. Could Rowling, could J.K. Rowling say this about Paul or any of the apostles? Or Jesus Christ? No. No, but it was easy for her to say it about C.S. Lewis. That goes to show you how far from biblical standards that this man strayed. This is um, from Friday Church News Notes, March 25th, 05. <clears throat> Seeking to cash in on the current popularity of religious themed movies, the Walt Disney Corporation, who's wicked and evil to the core, if you have any doubts on that, just email me and I'll get you the... I need to do a teaching on Walt Disney too, I think. I really do, because there, there, there's so much stuff on Walt Disney, I, I, I can't even... I don't know how many parts it would be. 
Um, seeking to cash in our current popularity of religious themed movies, the Walt Disney Corporation is creating a series of films adapted from C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia. The first due for release is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Lewis believed in prayers for the dead, purgatory, confessed sins to priests. He denied the total depravity of man and the substitutionary atonement of Christ. He believed in theistic evolution and rejected the Bible as the infallible word of God. He taught that hell is a state of mind. <clears throat> the Narnia fables are filled with heresy, promoting the concept of white and good witches, and even teaching universalism. In the chapter, further up and further in from the last battle, an individual is accepted by Aslan the lion who is the mythical Christ figure, even though he served in Ajalon's arch enemy, enemy Tash, all his life. When the individual expresses his amazement as being accepted, Ajalon says, therefore, if any man swear by Tash, now this is another confirmation of that last quote, Ajalon, this Christ line figure, says, if any man swear by Tash, or Satan, and keep his oath for the oath's sake, it is by me that he is truly sworn. So, in other words, you make, you make a pledge to the devil, an oath to the devil, a deal with the devil, <clears throat> and it's really not the devil you made a deal with. It's just, it's Christ. Though he knew it not, and it is I who reward him. So, you can make a deal with the devil and still be rewarded. <clears throat> I don't know, you know, what more absolute, total, unbiblical, rank, heresy, and apostasy, this devil could spew forth. This <clears throat> is a lie of the devil and could be responsible for sending, well, it is responsible for sending, I would venture to say, millions of souls to hell. And those souls are still going. Because you've got the influence of this man on people like J.K. Rowling who are indoctrinating all the kiddies into absolute high-level witchcraft. The witchcraft that they go into in the Harry Potter books is high-level witchcraft according to people that have been involved in the occult and have come out. Or sometimes they're involved in the occult and are still there. There's some things that they won't even do in those J.K. Rowling books, people that are involved in witchcraft. Lewis is teaching <coughs> false doctrines here again. <clears throat> uh, let's say when, when I interviewed the head of the New Testament Department of Sempore University founded by William Carey in India long ago he told me the same thing I asked him whether Hindus will be accepted by God if they are sincere in their religion he replied certainly William Carey in India he started the New Testament Department of Sempore University he told me, I asked him whether the Hindus will be accepted by God if they are sincere in their religion. He said, Why, certainly. Of course. Yeah. But Doug just informed me that this, this man, this William Carey, um, uh, is started the modern day mission movement and was a hero to very many people. I didn't even know about him. Uh, I, um, and, but he's saying, that, like I said, this leaven has so permeated through modern day Christianity and it is so vast and there's very few people talking about it at all. Because, why? Because they're part of the problem. They're part of the brainwashing. They have departed from the ways of God. They have departed mainly from the word of God. Does it mean I think I'm better? No. But this is the reason I came out from these modern day denominational things. Because I just saw this everywhere. No matter where I went, I couldn't get away from it. Wherefore, come out from among them and be not partakers of their plagues. You know, we, we, we're supposed to do this. Don't go to a church just for the sake of going to a church if it's apostate. Read your Bible and do what you can do at home. Play, play the King James Bible. Pray. If there's nobody in your area, I'm sorry, it may come down to that. Particularly in America, where there's a church on almost every corner. But unfortunately, 